So I'm running sound at the theater for a musical that is being put on and I wanted to survey how I have the soundboard set up for that process for running the sound. So this is a digital soundboard, which is certainly versatile. Uh, let me start by just showing how I've set up the channels. Uh, we've got you know different layers and on the first layer I've got uh, all voice mics and each channel is I've got it labeled by the character name. Um, any named character, I like to do it by the character name. That way if um, someone substitutes in for a character and they have a different mic, I can just reroute their mic to that character. I don't have to memorize for each different show uh, who's running which um, character. Each of the characters are grouped uh, by color. Uh, color scheme, here's the principles, the seconds, uh, and then there's ensemble uh, as well. Having the board in color groups really makes it easier to identify where characters are, um, especially since characters tend to come on and come off at the same time in shows. After layer one, on layer two, we've got some remaining microphone needs. Uh, normally, these first uh, channels of layer two I use for band instruments, but we just have a computer input here, but I do have uh, in stereo a Foley sound effects uh, computer. Uh, that we're making use of. Uh, these are all body packs. Uh, some colors I've inverted because there's subgroups that some of them come on at the same time. These over here color-coded are um, handheld mics. These handheld mics are color-coded to the tape that are on each mic, uh, green, yellow, pink, and blue, which makes it really easy to identify them from the stage. Uh, on layer three is just uh, the, sound, the, the, the music track uh, computer. And just a note on those layers, it's super helpful to go ahead and black out on this script strip uh, channels that uh, you're not using. So in the midst of the show, it's easy to have those uh, out of your way. For each channel, I've added a baseline EQ for them. So uh, baseline would just include uh, a, a, a gate so that it's not picking up uh, slight noises that they don't need. Um, there's a low cut on each of them so that uh, low frequencies that aren't needed are on there. There's a compressor on each channel as well. The compression uh, makes sure that, you know, in this show, sometimes they're singing, sometimes they're talking, but sometimes they scream. So we want that scream to be cut out so the compressor uh, reduces that as well. Ideally, you add some individualized uh, EQ for the soloists. I've done very little of that. I haven't had time with the individual singers to do that, but occasionally I've used equalization on a channel to, for instance, here's someone who wears a, uh, a ball cap uh, just above the body mic on their hairline, and so I have brought down the frequency that creates this echo effect because uh, of that cap. So additional to the color coding uh, that groups them, I've got them channels grouped on these mute groups as well, which allow me to uh, quickly uh, mute and unmute a group as they come on and off the uh, stage, which is super helpful because they tend to enter and exit, especially helpful for quick mutes. I can mute the whole cast or just the ensemble or, or parts of the cast. It's divided into principles, seconds, thirds, and then the high voices in the ensemble and the low voices in the ensemble. And an additional way of controlling the individual channels as groups, uh, I've set them up on DCAs. DCA is a way to have a remote control. So I really have just set up three microphone uh, DCAs. There's mics for the main, so I can bring all of this, of uh, all the principles up and down. If they're not at unity, then it will match what their volume is uh, on the individual sliders. But if I bring that down, it will bring those four down as a group. Uh, I've got seconds as well and then the rest of the ensemble. This helps especially so I can adjust the mix that's going in when, for instance, some of the ensemble is singing from off stage where there's no audio voice, I can bring that up some. Uh, and when they're coming down into the house, like out into the audience uh, or standing in front of the speakers, I can bring these down to avoid feedback and unnecessary volume that we don't need, as well as when they're screaming as a whole on the stage, which does happen. The only other DCA group I've added is here's a control for the computer that's that's doing uh, the music because otherwise I have to 
go over to the third layer just to adjust the computer volume. So I've got this remote control for it here. That's especially helpful so I can bring uh, the soundtrack up when there's just like dancing with no singing and I can bring it down when it is uh, just some background music uh, that could otherwise wash out the dialogue. After the DCA groups, we've got our mix buses. Um, I'm really just running standard mix buses. I have uh, a stage monitors uh, pair of those, uh, and then a pit monitor as well. Can adjust those uh, and mute those. And then below those, we do also have a mix bus set up uh, for another purpose. This is a broadcast mix bus that uh, we're not using in this show. In the last show, we did hire professional recorders, and so they were able to uh, use that and tap into the soundboard for recording the show. This allows me to add some effects to some channels that need some extra help that they don't need in the house speakers, but they do need in a broadcast line. We've got our special effects buses. I've got uh, three, four special effects set up. One is just a standard basic plate reverb that's good for solo voices when they're having a featured number. Um, then here's a special effects reverb I've added that we're using in a couple places. And, and here is a delay uh, that I'm using for, for instance, they're yelling at each other in a canyon and so we're adding a little bit of delay to their voice. The plate reverb is real subtle. It's just at 20 dB. So it's just adding a little, uh, a little nuance to their voices, cleaning it up just a little bit here in the sound that we have in the house. And then I've got those uh, also routed to our assign keys uh, over here. So this allows me to uh, mute and unmute any of those special effects uh, by touching uh, the button, as well as it allows me to adjust the tempo of the reverb. Um, I use this button a lot. Super helpful to when we have a song and they are singing some and then they do dialogue. I turn. Uh, I turn off, I mute the special effects so we don't have any echo effect during their dialogue. Uh, I turn it back on, engage it when they're singing again. That happens uh, quite a bit. And last but not least, there is also just our general left and right main bus. And I do have some uh, EQ that I'm putting on that. This is solely for hunting down, uh, finding and getting rid of uh, frequency, feedback frequencies. So every time I find one of those, uh, I, I, I engage the house uh, mains and then search for that frequency and then bring it down. So you see I've got uh, one, two, three, four that I've found for different numbers and I just leave those there. It's a super narrow cue and narrow uh, band so it's not uh, affecting the quality really. Ideally you could bring those down from individual mics but in this instance it's been a collection of mics that create quite a bit of feedback problem because their hairline microphones are really broad spectrum and so feedback was a, an issue so it's pretty aggressive to have these four frequencies that I'm uh, searching and destroying uh, those frequencies. And then just to point out that in the scene uh, settings I make a point to save uh, this musical um, so we've got that there. We have a basic setup that was the starting place that I used when I was doing my setup uh, and then after that for the next show, we'll create uh, the next one as needed as well. Well, that's the setup that we have on the uh, digital board for running this musical. Cheers.